Uh, topic is network configuration automation uh, and uh, implementing net ops mindset. And the agenda is about, uh, well, is like uh, a little bit theory from the very beginning. Uh, we will talk about uh, implementing of uh, architecture framework in action. We will speak about the problem uh, which is solved by this uh, framework and uh, solution approaches. Then we'll speak a little bit about uh, best practices in network automation. And uh, then the second part of the presentation is the real world, world project experience, which we had implementing NetOps uh, approach, uh, some uh, several architectural uh, concepts, uh, which we used during the uh, uh, project. And uh, well, some outcomes and metrics which we we expected to have so uh long story short well uh network configuration management today is undergoing significant transformation traditional methods are uh giving way to modern automated and standardized approaches they and the complexity of today's network demands more uh demands more efficient reliable and scalable solution to manage configurations and ensure seamless operations. So you have a beautiful uh, uh, visualization by uh, ChatGPT hallucination. So uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, well, let's let's talk about uh, topic overview. So the importance of automation and standardization. Uh, they are crucial for management modern networks and they reduce their reliance on manual processes which are prone to errors and inefficiencies so standardized procedure ensure consistency across the network, enhancing reliability and simplifying troubleshooting. And automation speed up deployment, update scaling, uh, enabling network teams to focus on strategic initiatives. So there are several uh, uh, concepts like uh, NetOps. So uh, to explain NetOps or network operations, it is an approach that integrates network management with modern operational practices, often borrowing principles from DevOps. It emphasizes agility, collaboration, and automation to enhance network reliability and performance. And uh, one more, uh, probably uh, a uh, more known principle to everybody here, that the network as a code, this philo philosophy uh, treats network configuration and management tasks as code, allowing them to be versioned, tested, automated, and by leveraging uh, Programming principles, network configuration can be applied consistently and uh, reproducibly, reducing the risk of errors and uh, improving scalability. Well, I'm done with lots of reading, so let's let's have some talking a little bit. So I'll try to uh, uh, explain some important concepts which are used during uh, today's presentation. So uh, NetOps is an approach that integrates modern uh, uh, operational practices into network management. It focuses on agility, collaboration, and automation uh, to improve network performance and reliability. Network configuration as code. One of the core principles, the uh, practice of treating network configuration and management task as code. And um, this approach allows for versioning, testing, automation, uh, leading to more consistent and reliable network operations. Uh, shift left for networking. This concept involves uh, integrating network uh, uh, considerations early in the development process. By shifting network tasks left in the development life, life cycle, potential issues can be identified and addressed uh, sooner, earlier, leading to more robust and reliable uh, networks operation. Infrastructure is code. For network automation and uh, orchestration, this approach uh, applies infrastructure as code principles to network management. It involves uh, using code to automate uh, the provisioning, configuration, and management of network infrastructure, ensuring consistency and scalability. And uh, building a net ops mindset, which is uh, the uh, topic of today's whole uh, presentation, is adopted. And net uh, dev ops mindset, well, it, it means that adopting a dev ops mindset involves merging the uh, principles of NetOps with the DevOps practices. It uh, encourages a culture of collaboration, continuous improvement, and uh, automation uh, aiming to enhance network operations and align them more closely with the overall IT uh, practices. 
So uh, the problem description. So which which are the problems of uh, uh, network configuration development? So first of all, it's legacy methods and inefficiencies. Mm. Uh, traditional network configuration methods uh, often uh, rely on outdated tools and practices, uh, leading to significant inefficiencies and increased time and resource consumption. Uh, manual processes and uh, their pitfalls. Um, manual network configuration processes are labor intensive. Uh, they are prone to many, many human errors and mistakes, resulting in inconsistent uh, configuration and frequent uh, operational uh, and deployment issues. Lack of comprehensive infrastructure documentation. Uh, well, normally, well, for the whole IT branch, the documentation is scarce. And the absence of details and up-to-date infrastructure documentation complicates troubleshooting and hinders effective planning and increases the risk of misconfiguration. Uh, performance and scalability issues. Legacy systems um, struggle to meet modern performance and scalability demands leading to bottlenecks and reduced network efficiency as the network grows. Uh, and finally, uh, inconsistent environments and lack of disaster recovery policies and uh, inconsistent configuration across different network uh, environments create uh, unpredictable behavior. Uh, and uh, complicate management while inadequate disaster recovery policies increase the risk of uh, prolonged downtime in data loss failures. Okay, and so here is the scheme, well, the, the diagram which uh, shows actually the uh, chaotic uh, nature of current uh, methods if in network configuration, I would say that's the legacy methods of network configuration before implementing that net, net ops uh, uh, mindset. So first of all, what we have uh, here is that, well, we have different tools, different methodologies for network change management, for data gather gathering. So for, for instance, it starts, it may start in service now, or it may start from a letter uh, or from an email, or it may start from a Slack request. Uh, then there are several things for data gathering, why configure, what configure, how to configure, what are the requirements. Uh, then uh, the network configuration team does manual pre-checks, deploys uh, script, uh, normally running scripts manually, or trying to invoke some, let's say, lambdas or, uh, or some Python code from the bash uh, prompt. Then the, there is manual post check. Uh, manual update of, a J, uh, of adjacent systems, and then manual update, uh, finally, uh, manual update of closing uh, tickets and uh, request is complete again, closing the uh, ticket or issue in ServiceNow, in Jira, in Slack, or send, sending a letter. So uh, that's a sort of a legacy approach, which is uh, sometimes met, which is sometimes seen in different um, client companies that we, uh, that we work with. Uh, now for the solution approaches and uh, um, about uh, implementing the modern tools and methodologies. Uh, so uh, we are speaking about integration of uh, uh, modern tools and um, methodologies and implementing Net NetOps mindset begins with uh, uh, Integrating modern tools and methodologies for network automation. These tools facilitate automation, allowing network configurations to be applied consistently and accurately. By leveraging advanced technologies, organizations can streamline network managing process, reduce manual uh, intervention, and enhance overall operational efficiency. So uh, one of the approaches is to focus on automation, uh, continuous uh, uh, development and uh, continuous deployment uh, and collaboration. A core aspect of net networks approach is emphasis on automation uh, of CICD, continuous integration and deployment pipelines. Automation reduces the likelihood of human errors uh, and speeds up the development process while CICD pipelines ensure continuous testing and integration of network configurations. Uh, collaboration tools uh, such as uh, Slack and Jira promote effective communication among team members, fostering a, uh, a culture of shared responsibility and collective problem solving. 
And uh, speaking about the key uh, objectives uh, for the companies trying to implement the, uh, the uh, NetOps mindset is efficiency, reliability, and standardization. And the primary goals of adopting a NetOps mindset are to achieve greater efficiency, reliability, and standardization um, when efficiency is enhanced by automating routine tasks, allowing network teams to focus on strategic, strategic in initiatives. And reliability is improved uh, through consistent and reducing the risk of errors and downtime. Uh, standardization ensures uh, uniformity across the network, simplifying management, troubleshooting, and uh, scalability efforts. So this is the uh, picture how we would uh, how we would look at the process after implementing and adopting NetOps mindset. And this is the di diagram, which uh, is resembling quite uh, quite a lot the uh, agile way of uh, of developing software but now these principles are applied to network configurations so uh, this net ops mindset diagram illustrates the continuous and iterative process of network automation emphasizing the integration of modern tools and methodologies to achieve efficiency reliability and standardization the central infinity loop represents the uh, cyclical nature of NetOps uh, process, which is broken down into distinct phases, plan, code, build, test, uh, release, deploy, and uh, operate, and monitor. And each phase is uh, assigned with a specific actions and goals that uh, uh, contribute to overall automation and management of network configuration. So the goals are automation, to streamline processes and reduce manual intervention as we have already defined. CICD integration, uh, implement continuous integration and deployment pipelines to ensure rapid and reliable updates. Collaboration, foster team collaboration through standardized tools and procedures. Efficiency and reliability, enhance operational efficiency through consistent and repeatable processes and standardization to ensure uniformity across uh, the network simplifying management, troubleshooting, and scalability issues. Any questions until this point? Okay, now uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, theoretical stuff. So uh, uh, to uh, well uh, to adopt the network uh, uh, netops mindset, we uh, we are moving uh, forward with the uh, TOGAF. Uh, architectural framework, we implement the main principles. So TOGAF, the open group architecture framework is a highly uh, relevant to network automation, is highly relevant to network automation as um, it provides a structured approach to uh, aligning IT infrastructure with business goals. By applying TOGAF principles, uh, companies and organizations can ensure that their network automation initiatives are not technically uh, uh, not only technically sound, but also strategically aligned uh, with broader business uh, objectives. So TAGAF focuses on comprehensive, uh, TAGAF's focus on, on comprehensive uh, planning governance and continuous improvement ensure the network automation efforts support organizational goals, such as enhanced service delivery, operational efficiency, and regular, uh, regulatory compliance. And uh, uh, the framework helps in identifying and mitigating risks, ensuring the automation processes, uh, that the, the automation processes are resilient and adaptable to changing business needs. So the uh, architecture development method is the core of TOGAF and it embraces many phases. Uh, well, I, I, I'm sure most of uh, people here already know what, what, what it means, so we will not uh, list them a lot. So uh, the phases like, well, so, so um, the, the cycle begins with a preliminary phase, establishing the architecture vision and defining the scope of the objectives. In the course of uh, the real world project is just uh, uh, gathering data. Uh, about the project. So the subsequent phases such as business architecture, information system architecture, ensure that the network automation efforts are integrated with business processes and data management strategies. Well, here we create the uh, architecture vision document, which is the main document for uh, the further development. Uh, uh, normally the company, uh, the companies would want, the client companies would want a develop, um, de uh, a discovery phase to be run uh, so that we uh, understand which are the requirements for the project. 
well, the uh, technology architecture phase uh, focuses on selecting and implementing the appropriate tools and technologies for the automation. And finally, uh, uh, the phases like opportunity solution, uh, migration planning and implementation governance uh, guide the deployment and the continuous uh, monitoring of the network automation solutions. Uh, I need to say well beforehand that uh, not all of the phases are present in the uh, implementing uh, NetOps mindset project uh, because sometimes it, it doesn't deal with the code development or delivering the real product, but a lot of phases well, st are still very much relevant, especially the discovery phase where we need to create uh, the uh, uh, requirements for well, when we need to list and take into account the requirements of the client companies for uh, for the NetOps. So speaking about TOGAF for Net NetOps, uh, there are several things like uh, to be uh, to be uh, taken into account. And the key strength of TOGAF here is aligning business goals with the uh, infrastructure. Uh, and ensuring compliance and uh, governance and uh, speaking about uh, the examples uh, are service delivery, automating network provisioning to speed up deployment uh, of new services, uh, thereby reducing time to market, operational costs, reducing manual intervention and associated labor costs, network reliability, uh, regulatory compliance, automating the application of security policies, uh, and compliance checks to ensure the network configuration meets regulatory uh, standards. And policy enforcement, using automation tools to enforce network policies uh, consistently across all, all devices. And audit and monitoring, implementing uh, automated logging and monitoring to provide an audit trail of changes and ensure uh, continuous compliance with uh, uh, governance policies. Uh, so we'll, we'll, well, I will try to, to make it a little bit faster. Um, so uh, governance and digital transformation. Governance and digital transformation are integral to the successful implementation of network automation, establishing the uh, clear policies, ensuring regulatory compliance and continuous monitoring are essential for effective governance. And meanwhile, digital transformation enhances business agility, improves uh, resource utilization and supports innovation and future growth. Together, these elements create a robust framework um, for modern network management, uh, driving efficiency, reliability, and strategic, strategic alignment with uh, business goals. And uh, speaking about uh, uh, key uh, policies, well, uh, there are also, we, we have already mentioned a lot of them, uh, using infrastructure as code, uh, rigorous version control, uh, automation within CI/CD pipelines, security and compliance integration. So uh, I will not uh, uh, I will not spend much time on that because we we have uh, we have a more interesting uh, example. We have a real world uh, real world uh, example of uh, implementing the NetOps mindset. But before that, I would also. Um, uh, speak a little bit about the key benefits which are uh, which are provided by implementing uh, NetOps mindset. So uh, that's of course scalability, security, and compliance. Again, adopting best practices in network aut automation uh, uh, offers significant benefits. Uh, for that, uh, infrastructure as a code uh, enables organization to scale net network infrastructure. Automation and rigorous version control enhance security by reducing the risk of human errors. Uh, and integrating compliance checks into the automation processes ensure the network uh, remains compliant with industry standards, minimizing the risk of legal and financial uh, repercussions. Uh, okay, so we're now well, we are closing to a more interesting part of the presentation uh, to the real world a real world uh, project which uh, a team of uh, developers uh, was doing with one of our clients. Our client is a large tourist company which has, uh, uh, which is well, the, uh, one of the uh, main competitors for the companies like Airbnb, which has a set of uh, uh, websites supporting their business. Uh, for operation and uh, their um, their infrastructure is uh, based on hybrid uh, 
uh, hybrid uh, environment uh, closely integrated with AWS. And uh, uh, well, what uh, what were the main uh, problems with that organization that uh, they uh, lacked mostly version control for uh, their network configuration. Uh, so the uh, company's network configuration team uh, lacked a robust version control system, making it difficult to track changes and revert uh, configurations uh, when the issues arose and the absence led to uh, inconsistencies and uh, increased risk of errors uh, uh, in production and deployment. Uh, so they were implementing ad hoc task execution. Uh, so network configurations were performed ad hoc without standardized procedures or documentation. This approach resulted in uh, unpredictable network behavior and complicated troubleshooting and uh, auditing efforts. Uh, and uh, legacy using of legacy system and uh, inc inconsistent environments. So the team had to manage a mix of uh, legacy system and uh, uh, inconsistent environments, which were not uh, compatible with the modern automation tools. And these inconsistencies caused uh, various performance issues and complicated the overall network management process. So. Uh, Speaking of uh, of the key project uh, objectives, so our team started to introduce best practices, uh, creating document, uh, creating documentation, uh, provide operational excellence by implementing the uh, uh, MVP, uh, which was requested by the client to be built. So meaning, well, which practically means the client wanted us to uh, create a solution that would provide pipelines for the network configuration, uh, CACD and operations, which uh, will be uh, uh, extendable by uh, different uh, components, uh, which can uh, have a reliable rollback and disaster recovery procedure. And uh, which will uh, which will also Im improve reliability and security. Bring in testing, uh, automated testing, automated uh, disaster recovery, change management, uh, and many other features. And uh, well, the uh, key objective was to provide one of the key objectives was to provide cost reduction and faster time to market. So. Uh, Speaking about the project implementation steps, um, but before speaking about project implementation steps, I would want to uh, emphasize that the project uh, did uh, well is evolving quite in a slow pace because of a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, changes in the requirements on the way. So uh, we are still working. For instance, when I was uh, when I was uh, scheduling this presentation, I thought that by May twenty three the project would 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 have uh, been finished. But unfortunately, well, but maybe not 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 unfortunately, but fortunately, the project is still live, and it's going to be uh, well. The the close date is in two months from now, and there are uh, there are discussions that they would probably need more features to be implemented on the way. Uh, so as for the project steps, uh, assessment and uh, planning, uh, we were creating, well, again, we were leading the discovery phase, a, um, a team, a small team of uh, DevOps uh, engineers and uh, uh, architects were, were creating the list of requirements, what needs to be done, uh, just made a, a discover, well, made a investigation on which methods and which uh, practices are uh, implemented in the team. Well, then uh, to, uh, in tools selection and uh, well, create, create a, we created a set of tools uh, and uh, integrations. Um, well, the, then the, uh, the next phase would be automation, automation of network configuration, implementing CI CD pipelines, uh, implementing various uh, APIs, uh, and uh, then providing monitoring and optimization in the final phase would be knowledge sharing with the uh, with the company team. So uh, we are running out of time as far as I see. Well, I will try to uh, to shorten several uh, several parts of the presentation and uh, the uh, client company case study. So the uh, network automation context and tools and technologies which are used by the by the company. So the uh, company network configuration team uh, uh, 
normally works with uh, lots of components, which uh, which include Spinnaker, Netbox, uh, Panorama devices, Arista network fa fabric, uh, Citrix load balancers, uh, and several other uh, components. Uh, so the uh, tools and technologies which are used, well, they uh, they are AWS based and hybrid based, uh, and on premises based in a hybrid environment. We choose uh, we chose GitHub Actions to run the CI/CD pipelines, and uh, um, one of the parts of the solutions is a unified development environment. This is the uh, toolkit, which is. Uh, uploaded into JFrog Artifactory, and I will, will uh, speak about that a little bit later. Also, the company has a CDE, a common, uh, a common development toolkit, which is the set of tools which company adopted for support. Uh, they are open source tools, uh, open source uh, software uh, like uh, backstage.io uh, and, uh, and or paid uh, tools uh, which uh, were requested to be uh, uh, implemented, which were requested to be used during the uh, the project, and also uh, API uh, integration and CI/CD deployment, integrating components API uh, component APIs for metrics monitoring and security uh, purposes. So uh, let's have some project architecture overview. So as far as uh, as far as I, I have already mentioned, the main solution is built on GitHub Actions and. Uh, the uh, images uh, are uh, uh, hosted and stored in JFOG Artifactory. Uh, the container images, which uh, contain uh, uh, UDE and uh, different uh, other tools, which are used during the uh, the environment. Uh, so we are also using Backstage I/O for one of the uh, architectural components, and it is AW based. So the the tool is. Uh, the uh, well, the whole solution also embraces automatic change management, which is under development now. It is not yet finished, and which which is one of the uh, one of the uh, reasons that the project is still running. So integration. Uh, uh, okay, and let's 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 probably pass to the uh, to the uh, to the project components. So the project is divided into three major components. Uh, which are project uh, templates, which are the which actually is the initiation of the project, how the project is how the projects are created. I will show more details about that on on later slides. Uh, well, unified uh, development environment. This is the consistent uh, environment uh, setup that supports collaboration and standardization across the net uh, network teams. Meaning, actually, the, uh, that that. Uh, it is made in a form of a virtual container, which is uh, stored in GFOG Artifactory and can be pulled uh, uh, from from the Artifactory as a uh, uh, as a as an uh, as a Docker container to, to so that the Visual Studio Code uh, plugin can uh, can handle the remote development and which uh, can uh, which contains libraries packed for the execution. And also the uh, the third part is a CI/CD workflow. So I will let's let's pass to the architectural schemes. We are running out of time. I'm sorry. So the uh, project initialization, the project initial initialization starts from the network templates repository. Uh, this is the the repository contains different modules and different templates. The templates uh, consist of modules, and modules are reusable between templates. And uh, uh, the templates are the uh, the pieces of code uh, on YML uh, code which are under understandable by uh, backstage IO uh, application which uh, which can uh, <laughs> which is an open source platform for building development portals designed to unify and streamline the development environment by providing a single interface for managing uh, services. So uh, practically this, this means that the developers, the developers uh, create uh, network configuration, uh, create the templates for, for the projects, and then they can easily import them 
sort. Uh, they can e easily import them into Backstage, and when they want to initiate the project via, uh, via UI, the uh, well, uh, the uh, Backstage asks several questions like uh, which sort of a project, how to create. Uh, uh, which libraries do we need? Uh, which uh, technologies and languages are used? Uh, which access is required? And this is uh, this works in a sort of a uh, user interface wizard that can be uh, run on the um, which can be run on uh, on backstage. And then the result of this is the creation of a uh, uh, is the creation of uh, repositories in uh, a self-hosted GitHub which contains different configurations for different processes. So that's uh, how the projects are initialized. So this is the phase one of the, of the project. So the second part of the project is the UDE. And uh, the, uh, there is a, a team within the project that uh, manages the UDE images repository when the, uh, where the UDE tool is hosted. And UDE is a, uh, uh, and uh, a description of a container that developers can pull uh, to start developing network configuration code. Uh, this uh, this is uh, deployed to JFrog Artifactory, and uh, developers define uh, name of the image, other metadata, uh, how the tests are run, and uh, provide the uh, provide the uh, libraries which are needed for the development. And uh, uh, developers who work with the network configuration can pull the UDE image, create a local container for running, or even run it remotely as uh, which well from from the container which are uh, from the uh, uh, from the machines that are available from the uh, containers that are available in AWS Service Catalog. So uh, this is the second part of the system. And the, uh, the last part is uh, the CI CD workflow. Speaking about uh, what was new, what we brought into the company, well, that uh, probably every step of that was implemented by us. And every step of it was new because they didn't have CI CD uh, in, in full. So, uh, we implemented uh, so every step which you see at the uh, at the at the uh, at the diagram was implemented and standardized by our team uh, for the uh, for the client company. So the uh, it looks like the uh, 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 developers uh, develop the configuration code uh, locally, execute commits. Or in the in the UDE ex execute commits, the code is uh, running through tests, through code quality and security uh, checks, and then uh, the uh, a pull request is created, and pull request uh, is triggering the the whole uh, the whole procedure. So the uh, code is deployed to self-hosted runners, which uh, are hosted in AWS, and they are managed by uh, AWS Autoscaling. Then uh, images are built uh, to be pushed to JFrog. They they create base image. They create test image based on the base image, and they they uh, create a distroless uh, uh, production image. Uh, and then the uh, then the trivi is run to check uh, the images for the vulnerabilities. And then uh, everything is deployed to JFrog. And after that, after after deploying test images to self-hosted runners. Uh, uh, the test, uh, well, uh, the, uh, I beg your pardon. So the images are, uh, are uh, uploaded to self-hosted runners, which belong to AWS test account. And then uh, the all applicable tests uh, uh, are run. And uh, after that, the uh, image is, uh, well, on the um, I need to uh, to say that on uh, part four, the uh, well, the automatic policy agent is run to automate uh, the uh, 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 did to uh, to automate different implementation of policies. And uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. 
Then, uh, pardon? So and uh, thus the uh, the uh, uh, the image is created. Well, after uh, after the tests are successful, the image is created with tags notifying it is suitable for production. The workflow is uh, waiting for the approval, which is a click in uh, GitHub Actions, and then it deploys to production. Uh, uh, to uh, the the production image is deployed to a container. Uh, and then we are uh, we are running uh, several uh, configuration codes, uh, running small tasks, and uh, then finally we execute automated uh, change management process using the uh, API to uh, create a an issue in uh, uh, in service now, and then uh, then upload there uh, with API the uh, the results. Uh, and also we collect lots of metrics. Um, the, uh, we uh, hit Splunk uh, uh, with the uh, with the metrics. Uh, well, I have a separate page for that, but unfortunately we lack a, we lack a lot of time. And uh, uh, CloudWatch uh, agent also collects different metrics related to AWS to provide uh, auto scaling. And at the same time, the governance is uh, is provided by flight center from the client company for the off-cycle security control for governance and re regulatory issues. So, um, so we have, uh, uh, now let's, let's speak a little bit, uh, some metrics. Unfortunately, no initial metrics were provided by the client. And uh, the, uh, so at, at the time of finishing, uh, project, we may have expected success metrics as well as expe expected uh, benefits, but we cannot speak of uh, how how much we could improve because clients really didn't have uh, didn't have that uh, that much uh, uh, metrics. Uh, okay. Uh, expected uh, key success metrics. Well, they were uh, calculated on a preliminary basis, but by our develop uh, developers. So we expect 60% re reduction of uh, duplicate code. Uh, we expect 90% uh, of success rate for automated deployments. Uh, we expect 50% faster deployment uh, times uh, and improving time to market. And uh, the key benefits would be enhanced code quality and reliability, boosted team collaboration and efficiency. Uh, and these are main main uh, gains from uh, from from the project. As speaking about uh, lessons learned, unfortunately, we we lack so much time. Probably that that would be the. Uh, the subject for another presentation about lesson le lessons learned. So, uh, as uh, as normal, the uh, well speaking about the lessons, they, they can be divided into several parts. So, communication and feedback is the uh, is the uh, biggest um, biggest problem, biggest uh, issue, and uh, of course, one one of the things is that escalate problems early and request for feedback because uh, sometimes the teams especially the partner teams from the client company are not very, are not always ready uh to uh implement what the uh development team uh the netops development team uh, uh wants them to do well uh, the client requirements may change very fast so well one of the, another lesson is uh, documenting everything as much as possible and uh discussing and uh, speaking aloud with the client what what is uh, what is required and how the the uh, uh, the requirements change and uh, how much time that would take or how much resource resource that would would take and uh, well the resistance of the system because uh, well the, the reason the, you you will always experience some resistance of the system uh, because the existing the existing network configuration team doesn't all is not always ready to uh, use implement and even to understand uh, the uh, outcomes of ne of uh, network automation and the methods we are going to implement and teach them. So also we we have created an extensive uh, recommendations on best best practices. So the uh, lesson learned here would be. Uh, 
just try to implement and think of best practices and implementing them as early as possible in the course of the development of the project. And uh, well, speaking about other uh, lessons, well, that's uh, uh, in a big organization like we were we were working with. Uh, it's always a problem to get proper access. So uh, maybe making making the communication uh, with uh, uh, different uh, uh, different departments within the company would be uh, would be more profitable because well most of the problems that arise during the uh, uh, during the uh, uh, development of the solution we had was just lacking of the keys, lacking of accesses and uh, huge delays because of uh, wrong communication, miscommunication uh, and weak inter-team uh, uh, collaboration. And uh, also another lesson is, well, you, well, we need always to be ready for a situation when the documentation is, is lacking. And one of the uh, key uh, advices here would be just to, uh, to start thinking about standardization of documentation and providing documentation on the early stage on the early stages as much as possible. Uh, okay, so the conclusions. So we come to the conclusions and the summary of key points is that network automation is crucial for modern network management. It enhances efficiency, it reduces manual errors. Uh, by automation routine tasks, uh, organization can uh, organizations can free up val valuable resources to focus on strategic initiatives and innovation and uh, uh, project objectives and benefits. As we have already covered, the primary objectives uh, were to streamline network management, enhance reliability, achieve uh, scalability through automation. Uh, key benefits included reduced code duplication, increased, uh, increased automation success rates, and faster deployment times, leading to improvement overall network performance and business agility. And strategic significance and ongoing improvements. Well, network automation holds strategic importance by aligning uh, IT infrastructure with business goals, enhancing agility, and maintaining compliance with regul regulatory standards. So also continuous monitoring and uh, adaptation ensure that the network evolves with changing demands, supporting ongoing improvement and long-term success. And uh, as a call uh, for action, uh, there are several items to be taken into account. Commitment to continuous improvement, uh, dedicate resources to reg uh, regularly review and refine network automation processes, ensuring they adapt to emerging challenges and opportunities, establish a culture of continuous feedback and iteration to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of network operations, exploring new automation technologies, actively research and pilot new automation tools and technologies that can further streamline and enhance uh, network management, invest in training and development to equip your team with the skills needed to leverage these technologies eff effectively. And uh, staying ahead of the curve uh, uh, in network management, impl implement a proactive strategy to stay updated with the latest trends and best practices in network management, participate in industry forums, attend conferences, engage with, uh, with uh, thought leaders to ensure a network infrastructure uh, so that your network infrastructure remains cutting edge and competitive. And uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, sorry, well, it took a little bit more time than I was expecting. If you have any questions, please let, let's start discussion. I, I understand that we have, that I have not covered much uh, about the implementation. So if you have questions, so let's try to, to spend some minutes to discuss, to discuss the topic. Yeah, I have a, qu a question regarding the qualifications of engineers that that participated in 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 such practice. Oh, uh, okay, that's that's a very good question uh, because we had a very strong team of uh, uh, DevOps. Uh, we had uh, Cloud DevOps practice lead working on the uh, on the uh, solution. We have we had DevOps expert and a DevOps engineer, 
along with the uh, with the project manager and also we had uh, uh, we had four developers uh, devops expert uh, senior software developer uh, working mainly with python and network configurations uh, senior software developer and and a test lead uh, who works with the testing framework providing uh, providing uh, testing guidelines for for the whole solution And oh, and speaking about the uh, the uh, team from the uh, from the uh, company side. Now let me launch this again. So speaking about the uh, the team from the uh, company side, it's well, it's a little bit uh, confusing because the network network configuration team consisted consists of different people who belong to different. Uh, subdivisions within the organization uh, and who are bound together uh, just to perform network configuration, but they can be managed with different managers and they can be located in different time zones. And that's, uh, and that's one of the, uh, uh, of the time zone struggling problem that uh, we had difficulties in communicating with those teams. Um, as for the qualifications, we had to, well, as I was speaking again uh, about the resistance of the system, we had to promote different ideas because sometimes the qualification is not on par with the modern methods. Like we had to make um, presentations and workshops for them, how the code is structured, how to use object-oriented principles, how to, to uh, use libraries, uh, namely Python libraries in development of Lambda, how to scale uh, the code, how to use best practices, patterns, and so on and so forth. And sometimes it's very hard to communicate to them because um, even because from the standpoint of the prioritization, um, they may okay. They may tell okay. We have we have some ongoing problems, and we cannot, uh, for instance, go to this and this. We cannot attend this and this meeting. And this is uh, this this of course brings in a lot of uh, complications with uh, with promoting the ideas. And probably it's one of the uh, biggest reasons that the project is still ongoing. But in the same time, we are happy to have a very sound approach from the management of the company who understand those uh, hardships and who just want us to continue our work because what we're doing for network um, uh, for network configuration standardization may be applied for the whole company. And uh, the principles we are uh, providing them, uh, uh, principles and best practices and uh, examples of the workflows would be beneficial uh, not only for uh, not only for uh, the network configuration, but for the rest of the teams because they have a lot of a uh, lot of applications running in their ecosystem, uh, like front end applications, like back end applications, lots of analytics, and so on and so forth. If this answers your question, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. There was a question in the chat, what is TOGAF? But I presume that uh, Vadim answered that it's the optimal great architectural framework. So Alexander, if you would like to add something to that, please. So TOGAF is the open group architecture framework. It's, uh, you, you, can, you can Google for, for, for their website and they are providing a framework uh, for uh, software governance and uh, software development is the top framework for architects. And uh, uh, the uh, architecture development method, the ADM, which we were speaking before, well, is uh, what every architect would use in their work. So it describes main prin principles how to approach development of uh, uh, most of the uh, of the projects in uh, in software industry and is one of probably most uh, uh, most reputable framework. And uh, if you would try to attempt to uh, 
pass the TOGAF certification. Well, some people say it's total brain damage because that's the 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 uh, the barrier the uh, uh, to for for the knowledge is quite high to uh, to pass the certification. Uh, I don't have the, the certification like that. I'm just only studying. I'm only trying to gather the main principles uh, of software development to implement uh, them in providing uh, architecture descriptions. Let me see where it is. Yeah, the opengroup.org is their website. Do you have any more questions? Any other questions? So, uh, Alexander, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope to see you in uh, other our events. After this meeting, you will receive a feedback form. Please uh, fill it in, uh, provide your opinion, your feedback. Uh, your opinion matters for us. Thank you once again, Alexander, for presentation. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a nice day. Please take care. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Have Goodbye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.